Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, I want to start you off with a question. And that question is, if you could choose where you wanted to find a bug in your program, where would you find it? Would you rather find it at compile time or link time or at runtime? And you can go ahead and think about that question for just a little bit. Think about if you're actually in the system, for instance, if you're playing a video game, do you want it to crash during runtime when you're about to beat the final boss? Or would you rather have that crash at the start and not have wasted all that time? So typically we prefer our bugs at compile time or maybe even link time, as was said by some other famous folks, I believe Sutter and Alex and Drescu in the C++ community. So with that said, I want to go ahead and show you one of our tools that's very helpful at compile time for enforcing some of the different ways that we can write safer code. And I've got to actually take you back in time here to some previous lessons here. If you actually search for some of the lessons on const from this series, you'll find where we first found out what const was, this idea of making a variable immutable, or this idea of using const in our classes, which makes our class is what we say const correct, this idea that we can't change member variables, and thus, again, writing safer code. But what was given in one of these early videos, and I probably promised to make a video uh, at a later date, which is what I'm making now, was this idea of const expert. So let me go ahead to CPP reference, one of our favorite sites here, search for const expert, and I just want to go ahead and show you this keyword. Now it can be used in a few different use cases. So today is a little bit of an introduction, but there are some cool things, for instance, like const expert if statements, but this is really what I want to talk about, const expert. And let's go ahead and just take a quick look at this here and basically see that we have this idea that I can declare the possibility to evaluate the value of a function or a variable at compile time. Now, why is this great? Well, one, by making things const expert, we're implicitly making them const. Again, nothing's really changing there. We're still writing safe code and trying to build a good system in this way. So again, const expert, it's got the word const here, which I'll highlight a few different times here. So again, it's something that's not mutable. That's a good thing. But again, the real win here is that we're evaluating values or functions at compile time. So that saves us at runtime performance. So let's go ahead and dive into a few examples here just to uh, give you some idea of how this works here. So what I'm going to do is just open up a main here. And let's just go ahead and create some variable here like i uh, equals seven, and we'll go ahead and, uh, you know, this code's not particularly interesting. And we can do some things to it, like add nine and 16 or something like this. And again, it's probably not very interesting. But something you might want to ask yourself is, what's the compiler actually doing with these values, nine plus seven and 16? It can probably figure out what this value is, 32, and just store that in I without having to do this actual work at runtime. That's the idea of const expert here, this idea that we're evaluating this code as we are parsing it to make sure that's valid, and then evaluating this expression here and storing it into I. So again, at runtime, we're saving ourselves these two additions, as well as all the stores and the moves into memory that we might have to do here. So let me go ahead and just show you something that I think will be a little bit more interesting here. And this idea that we can extend, and let me go ahead and just show you what this does here, const expert, but we can extend this idea by adding the const expert qualifier to a function. So let's go ahead and write a function here, add, let's take an integer here, a and b here, and we'll just return the value a plus b. Okay, so again, I'm going to do the non const expert version here, and just go ahead and assign i to uh, values, and something that we can do in our head, 7 and uh, 16. So that should be 23 if my math is correct. Now, showing you this here isn't uh, as interesting. So I'm actually going to uh, lean into another tool that's going to be more useful here. So let me go ahead and grab our code and take you over to uh, Godbolt or Compiler Explorer and run this code here. Now, again, what I'm going to show you here is the actual assembly that's evaluated at runtime. Now, you might not be able to read the assembly. That's OK. That's not what I'm asking you uh, to do. But what I am going to focus you in on here, uh, and let me go ahead and just set some of these filters or show you that I'm filtering out these things here. Uh, I'm using um, non-Intel assembly, so usually GNU uh, assembly here. 
Uh, let me go ahead and just scroll down here. So color coded here, we can see what's going on with the add function here and corresponding on the right side here. So I'll make it just a little bit bigger uh, so you can see here. And let me go ahead and zoom that in here. There we are. All right. So the important thing here is say, well, when I have I here, I'm creating some storage. That's what a variable is. But in order to do the actual work here with these values, 7 and 16, which I'm highlighting, you have to, well, make a function call here for add, which takes in two integers and performs the associate operation. So you can already see at the very least that there's four lines or so here that correspond to this operation here. If we can do or evaluate this I here as const expert, so const expert, and I'll add that qualifier to the function. And let's go ahead and add it to the uh, actual uh, variable here, const expert. And I'll make it just a little bit bigger here. So you can see. Well, now when I actually look at this code, and I've got to zoom out just to make it a little bit more clear. Let's see, there should be one line in yellow. You're going to see here that, well, there's not even that function call anymore. It's just directly evaluated what is, well, in hex, this value hex 17, which is 23 in the decimal here, this value here. So we didn't do any work at the actual runtime. We didn't have to make a storage, make that call, and so on. So that's the key advantage with const expert. Now, again, depending on if I want uh, I to be able to do anything with this, I could actually get rid of this const expert here. Let's see if that changes our assembly. Um, and it does here because we sort of need this value to be flagged as something that we're able to evaluate at compile time. Again, just because I'm calling into some function that has const expert, it doesn't uh, necessarily mean that this will always work. It's sort of a suggestion to the compiler to try to uh, evaluate this add function and store the result here. Now, because I might be mutable or mutated, for example, I could do I++ for instance, I can't make any claim about this being a const expert thing. Uh, because again, const expert sort of implicitly implies const. So let's go ahead and just show what the compiler is going to do if I have something that is const expert and then I try to mutate it here. Well, you'll see in the uh, bottom of Godbolt here, I get an error here saying, you know, cannot assign a variable i with i++ because it's declared uh, const here, essentially. Uh, now, if I do um, get rid of this, then we should be okay. And again, we'll see the uh, assembly code that just generates or evaluates this expression at compile time. So this is super cool that we can do this with functions. And you can do sort of more powerful things. If you can express this in uh, or other functions in a recursive way, for instance, then you know, const expert is one of your tools for evaluating things at compile time. What was our other tool for evaluating things at compile time or rather generating code at compile time? I'll give you a moment to think about it if you've been watching this series. And that was generics or templates in C++, this ability to do things or do actual work and evaluate things at compile time. But const expert in a way is an easy way for us to do some work at compile time and generate a result. So I really like this tool and this idea that you can make uh, functions and variables uh, evaluate to const expert and again, save you runtime or perhaps uh, catch errors at runtime. So that's the goal here. Now, const expert itself can be a relatively uh, deep technique, and there are some gotchas. Some that I've learned through the community, for example, is when you're evaluating things at compile time, for instance, if I have a floating point number, so const expert uh, float f 3.1, you know, four, one, five, two, six, or whatever uh, pi is, <laughs> is what I'm getting to here. Uh, this evaluation of this um, thing here could be different than what it actually is at runtime. Uh, that was just one of the uh, gotchas uh, that I had uh, heard, so something to be aware of. And that sort of makes sense that this could be compiler sort of dependent on how are we evaluating floating point numbers, for instance. I would assume between GCC and LLVM, Clang compiler, they might be the same, but again, that's an assumption that you'd want to test on a tool like Godbolt. So there are some gotchas, again, because you have to think about where the evaluation is happening since it's on compile time. It might be uh, compiler dependent in that way. So that was just one thing uh, that I wanted to mention that you might not be aware of. 
Some other nice things, though, if you can have containers or data structures that are able to evaluate at const expert, that can be a really great thing for concurrency. For one, you know, just having stuff that's const or read only in general for highly concurrent programs is great. But if you can also save some computation uh, with your containers, that could also be uh, another win there. So anywhere where you can use const expert, that's a really good thing. So I hope this was an interesting introduction to const expert or gave you some things to think about and you can try some examples. I really like trying these examples with Godbolt, for instance. So go ahead and write a little simple add function and see if it works there uh, for you as I've done. So I hope you found this interesting and I hope this sort of is opening your eyes to some of the cool stuff we can do at compile time with C++. Const expert and then we're going to soon learn about things like static assert in this series. So make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss uh, those particular lessons. Lessons. All right, folks, with that said, if you enjoyed this lesson, go ahead and give it a big uh, thumbs up and I'll see you in the next episode.